Round 14 of Major League Rugby brings us to the Peach State Lupo Family Field at Life University where the Toronto Arrows take on Nola Gold alongside the great Pete Steinberg. I'm Kit McConico and Pete, a big time matchup between these two teams seemingly going in different directions with five rounds remaining in the regular season. That's right, Kit. I mean, we have Toronto. They're out of it. They're looking to next year and I think also looking towards Canada's tour of the UK um, in July. But for Nola, this is a must win. They're on the road for the rest of the season. They have to win this game to stay in the playoff race. They do indeed, does Nate Osborne's side. They have to get a victory. They got a big one last week. The weather, you expect that to be a factor today as it is gonna be slick conditions at the Snake Pit in Georgia. We take a look at the lineups for these two sides. First for the home team, Toronto. And for Toronto, a lot of changes, particularly in the power. He arrives on that front row, getting his first appearance of the season. Quatrin, Wadden, and Cellini all in the tight five. Mason Flesh moves from the blind side. And the Uruguayan, Manuel Diana, he will run out for his last time before heading to test duty for Los Teros. And in the backs for the Arrows, well, they stay pretty much the same as we saw last week, apart from Andrew Ferguson and Leandro Levas. They will start on the bench. And you see some of the names there, the co-captain Lesage and Joaquin Tukulek, the Argentine, who's been outstanding thus far this season. And now our starters for Nola Gold. Yeah, I mean, I think Nola here, it's all about the back row. It's going to be a big battle in the back row. There's um, Guerrero, who just got called up for the U.S. with the experienced Cam Dolan. But it's that Tonga Weir who leads Nola in ball carries. That back row is going to have to win for them to pull out the win today. In the backs. This has been a real struggle for Nola. They had their um, sixth starting fly half. Um, Tim Geeman comes back in, having been injured last time. And look for Hanno Dirksen. He's been really good, that pro from Wales. Um, been excellent the last couple of weeks. Uh, Dirksen was outstanding last week. Geico first 15 in that victory for Nola Gold and the reserves. And well, for Toronto, two new arrivals, the French prop, Alexandre Johnlin and the Irishman, Ronan Foley, both signed this week. What stands out to you for Nola Gold? Well, I love the play of Devin Short. He's a young American player. And again, the back row is going to be important. So I think Devin Short having an impact off the bench is going to be important. And Damian Stevens provides a much quicker game than the starter, Holden Youngett. So look for him to come in the last 20 minutes and help Nola close the competition. Just five weeks remaining in the regular season and it's must win time if you're gonna make the playoffs and both these men, particularly Nate Osborne, he knows that. Yeah, I mean, both of these guys have had huge challenges. Um, Chris Silverthorne, three or four months on the road, multiple World Cups is how he described it. But Nate Osborne, his challenge has been around injuries. He's really challenged, um, but has done a great job in being able to keep the team together. We'll have the opening kick between the Arrows and Nola Gold coming up after this. Presto app, you can load funds onto your Presto card instantly. So no need for this or this or to wait here. Go from app to tap, just like that. Go Transit. Safety never stops. Our schedules have changed, and we'll keep updating them to serve you better. So be sure to visit GoTransit.com to see the latest schedules. Have a very safe trip. Go Transit. Safety never stops.
Round 14, and it is going to be a wet one here at the Snake Pit Lupo Family Field in Life University in Marietta, Georgia, alongside the great Pete Steinberg. I'm Kid McConico, and, well, this is something we've seen all day long, and it appears it is going to continue into the evening. There is a 90% chance of rain through the night, currently 70 degrees, but it's going to cool off, and that is certainly going to have a big impact on this match as we get to your keys first for Toronto. Well, I mean, I think especially in the in the weather, Toronto have to get over the gain line. They have to get over, over the gain line. They've got to play with some pace. And no, look, they've got into the opposition 22 kit, but they haven't scored enough points. So turning that pressure into points is going to be critical for them. Pressure into points. The good news for Nola is there has been a result just wrapped up. We'll tell you about that in a second. That is very good news for them. JP Doyle is the man in the middle our sir for this matchup. Just five weeks remaining in the regular season. Noah, they are looking to get into playoff position. They had a huge victory last week, and they get a bit of a boost today as there is a result just gone final. Their Eastern Conference compatriots, Rugby United, losing to Utah. Very, very big win for Noah. It means a win and a bonus point today puts them within two points of that playoff spot. That's it. almost the, the, the result they wanted. Two bonus, extra bonus points for New York yeah, to get them to pull away. Seconds, 30 seconds. And if they seconds. are going to be in that playoff picture, one of the top two teams in the Eastern seconds, Conference, Lucas. they have to win today. They need the bonus point. Five matches remaining. They are all on the road. Grenade Osborne's yeah. side. Well, that's team. Yeah. They know about being on the road. Do the men from the great yeah. north, oh, the Toronto yeah, Arrows. Stuff, it has been a difficult season. Hats off to them. All they all have day. gone through the ringer. They have shown flashes of brilliance, but... Even though no team is statistically out of the playoffs, it's going to be very difficult for Toronto to get into the top two. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think that um, they're looking to really play for pride and also looking towards next season and some of these young guys they've got bringing on, seeing what they can do. Opening kick. Nola will take it going from left to right. South African JP Duplessis with ball in hand. You're okay. Obviously, there's some big international tests coming up. These two sides, they're going to lose a lot of players. Eight call-ups for Nola. I think that's a lot. Twelve for Toronto. And there's a good chunk of those young men that are going to have the Maple Leaf on their kit coming up in just a few weeks. And I think, um, Kit, we might be actually be seeing the 10, 12, 13 of Canada with um, Kelly, Jones, and Lesage playing together here. They may well end up being the team that plays in the UK. Already seeing that slick pill. It went backwards, so no knock on, but handling is certainly going to be paramount in this match today. Very warm welcome to you. Glad to have you with us wherever you may be joining us from. Hold on. Both these teams four, away, four, trying to find a big victory for Toronto. They have lost the last three in a row. First time in franchise history that they've lost three matches in a row. And a very proud franchise. They can turn it on. We saw that in 2019. They went on a run to end the season. They're going to be looking to do something similar here. Over the halfway line, not held. Continuing to rumble forward, just shy of the 10. Toronto, they have the speed, maybe not the size in the forwards. Good effort, Nevin. Well done. They like to spin it wide, get it to those men like Tukulet, Massage. The accuracy kit's going to be really important. So we talked about getting over the game line, and Toronto were able to do that multiple times. They were able to get over the game line, but then they have to be really accurate in the pass. Just took their eyes off the ball just a little bit there. You could see, Boys, thinking, you can't today, do that. So really the, the worse the conditions, the slippier the ball, the more you've got to just focus on holding on to it. So we saw what no, what, so excuse me, Toronto needed to do, but it's going to be hard for them to be accurate. Turnovers, is, it's going to be a real key. And both of these teams actually have more turnovers than anyone else. On the outside, Get 155 on the for the season. That's a great point, Pete. Both these teams, they have had issues holding on to it. And that was the case there for Spencer Jones. So first scrum will be to Dola put in by Younger. Okay, come on. High box Thank kick. You. They will test Toronto early. Very nicely taken there, considering the conditions. 
speaking with Nate Osborne earlier this week, he said, we want to go out there, we want to make this a physical match, really take it to Toronto. We want to put the pressure on the arrows, particularly on their number 10, Will Kelly. High kick, in and out of the hands. Mires unable to hold it. Here comes Duplessis. He has been an absolute terror this season. And there you see the big man getting carries. And we'll get the forwards involved early in the attack. Will Nola now looking to spin it wide. Opportunity here, ball in hand. Dirksen. I know Dirksen outstanding last week. He was Geico first 15 for his impressive performance in that victory. In and out of the hands, get him on there. Advantage over, knock on. Yep. Advantage ball, over, says J.P. Doyle, and right back with Toronto. And we're going to see, you would imagine, a lot of changes of possession. Yeah, and it's going to be really, really important in, in how they play. Interestingly, Nola aren't very good at turning turnovers into points. Only about 6% of their tries come from that. But over a quarter of the tries of Toronto come from turnovers. So you expect them to get an advantage when that ball's turned over. Another high skyscraping kick taken inside. Dirksen able to find the offload. Nola having more opportunities early. Ball in hand, neither side. Able to make any forays inside the opponent's 22. Just four minutes in. Toguia able to elude one. The Oakland, California native still on his feet. Turnover. Let it on the ground. Almost took it away okay, there. Unlucky. Well, unlucky. you could hear JP Doyle saying unlucky. So the turnover by Toronto was good. And then um, I think it was Doty got the ball as well. So great run by Tongawea. We know he's a good runner. Went to Nola actually as a center and then was transitioned to flanker. And it's been Just such sure a, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, been no, such no, a no, real he find he for them. Okay, well done. As an addition into no, the back row, positive, one of those guys that I think is probably looking at the Eagle squad being, hmm, what do you need to do to, so to make that squad? Because he's definitely got the physicality and the athleticism. And Moni Tonga, we, uh, he's used to playing on a life pitch, but that was the life west pitch. That's right. Maybe not as much rain on that side. Nicely taken. Good line out here from the arrows. Diana, Uruguayan. Concede the area. There we go. Good work, quick to the breakdown, is Brody. Yeah, perfect, well done. African scrum half, getting a good clean ball out. Oh, tried to get it over. Oh my, what a ball. I don't know that Sheridan thought that one was gonna find him, but able to retain possession are the arrows. Very aggressive defensive line right now from Nola. You see that massive jerseys at the game line. Ten, mind yourself, well done. Get it to exploit the gaps on the there with the tackle. Just outside the 22, looking to skip through one. That was Lucas Rumble, the co captain. It's great defensive stand by Nola here. Even if they've been able to give up the game line, they've been able to rebuild their wall and just not give any space to Toronto. Very well organized defensively. Dolce unable to get on the loose pill. Still with the arrows. Trouble breaking the line thus far for Toronto. Well done, six. But a concerted attack, a little stab kick no, through no, that no, one. Didn't play it. Out into touch. No, it no, came no. off of Julian Dominguez, the Argentine, but ruled not to have played it. And that was indeed the case. It just came off his midsection. Yeah, I mean, if you don't try and catch the ball, it isn't a knock-on. But what was really interesting about that for me, for Nola, how was picks? how quickly they got on their feet. Six they didn't contest at the breakdown. They just filled the space in the defensive wall, and that didn't give Toronto any space to be able to attack, which means eventually they had to kick. It was the only way they went forward. It was a good kick and a good platform here for Toronto to be able to have an attack. In and out of the fingertips, unable to hold on. Those flesh, the big man from Coburg who couldn't secure it. Still advantage, knock on. And the line out's going to be a critical area here. Um, Toronto had some challenges in the line out, particularly when they go short. And Cam Dolan is such an amazing line out operator that 
just inside Nola the have more steals than anyone else in the league. So you could see immediately Toronto's line out under pressure, and that might be a key. So yeah, yeah, Toronto's line out under pressure. That may may be a key for Nola to be able to win this game. I think the line out battle is going to be really, really important. They have to go to the back because they want to stay away from the contest. Actually, you know, an uncontested jump. That's one that they should take cleanly. You're too they far behind your loose head. should indeed, could not in that situation. You're too far behind your loose head, yeah. Come oh, level. Want, want I take a step back then, or? Well, whatever way you want to do it, I don't mind. You mentioned how good Nola is at the line out, and a lot Inside. of that is Inside because 22. of USA Eagle number 443, Cam Dolan. He is outstanding. One of the tops in the league in line out steals and takes both. Second come blood. Happy, sir? Yeah, much better. Too much Crouch. play has been down in this end, I think, for Nola. They're really struggling to exit their half. Toronto doing a good job of keeping the ball in the right part of the field, but they haven't quite been able to take advantage yet. Nice attacking platform provided by the scrum there. Dirksen, 30-year-old South African, big kick. Right to Sheridan. Sheridan trying to find his way through. Excuse me, rather, to Goulet. <laughs> and back the other way. Oh, a great kick. Absolutely meant that, didn't Great he? kick. So this is all about Hanno Dirksen reading the kick back. So he had the kick. It was a really good kick chase. And he completely read the kick back. Put him in a, in a, in a place to be able to field it, make the pass. And what a kick. I think that was Holden Youngert that took, made, made that kick. And a beautiful little spiral. I'm not sure he meant that to be a spiral there. Kit, I think that that's one of them that came off the boot the way he wanted it to. Younger with the, one of the best nicknames in all of MLR, the Vampire. And I'm going to give him credit. I think he absolutely meant for that to come off the way it did. He would have pinned the arrows inside their own 22 and knocked away another poor line out from Toronto. And here comes Nola. And Toronto's four man line out, five man line out, their short line outs are real problems for them. I'm not sure why they would go to a short line out because they've really struggled all season. Oh, I say that stolen away. Great work from Rumble. Of course, adding, uh, I think 20 steals, now it's 21. Leads the league and steals at the breakdown, does Rumble. It's okay, it's okay. Sorry. That is one thing Nate Osborne said. He goes, we have to control him at the breakdown. He will pinch a ball anytime he can. Person trying to find a bit of space up to the 10. Should have moved it there. There was some space wide. And that's one of the things that Nate Osborne wants to see his back three do is move that ball in the counter attack, not just take it and run. And I think there was space a little wider on the kick chase um, for Toronto. Younger electing to go to the blind side. A little room there. Dolan right into the teeth of the arrow's defense. Everything's just a little slow right now for Nola, not being able to get any go forward. Toronto able to defend pretty easily here. Tungawea able to elude one. Tony Tungawea. Been dangerous thus far. He's already cleared out. Can't just dive on him, okay? Penalty. That is going to go against Depper Schmidt. Yeah, um, you have to stay on your feet, and if there's no contest, what you can't do is you can't lose your feet. So the player was cleared out, so and you can see Depper Schmidt boys. come right over the top, okay. right onto the Toronto player. There was no need to do that. That's losing Diving your feet. Diving on a player who's already rolled out. JP Doyle being very explicit about what happened there. Um, and take, again, take the black line, Nola had the ball. They were inside Tor five, five, Toronto's five, five, five. half. They were getting some momentum. That penalty puts them all the way back, but it's this Toronto lineout that's been a real struggle early. And again, they go short, which has been a, a problem for them. So let's see if they can clean it up this time. Quatrin, the Holland landing Ontario native, a better throw, nicely taken. Able to clean it up indeed, exactly what the arrows needed. They've enjoyed the majority of the possession. Ripped, backwards, ripped away. Ripped backwards, backwards says J.P. Doyle. See it bouncing backwards yet again. Ball on the turf, picked up by Duplessis. South African, he has been all over the pitch this season, doing it in every aspect. No tool there to carry. Now, Yaman out, somehow held on to. Just a little bit of a mess over there. You can see they want to get the ball in Dominguez's hands because he's such a dynamic player for them. Leads the team in tries and line breaks, but just wasn't able to make the pass. I mean, I think what's really interesting for me about Nola's attack is how they're consistently attacking the outside shoulder of the Toronto 
defender. That allows them to play just a little bit quicker because it means the defender is unable to really get in the way. The outside um, tackle assist isn't able to come in. Make sure to tune in every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time on FS2. MLR All Access, Mark and Stacy, they bring you all the highlights, all the tries, all of the action from the week ahead, all in under 30 minutes. It is the official show of Major League Rugby. And I'll tell you this right now, they do an absolutely outstanding job. Tuesdays, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time on FS2. Better here. Chris passing from the arrows. They are the home team, and it's been a difficult year for them. Setting up shop here in Georgia. There's not been a complaint from those men. Can they find the opening points? Looking to strike first. You see the handling and issue there. Spencer Jones unable to secure it. Ball's just a little slow coming from the ruck. I mean, it's it's really interesting to see just one defender coming in. Oh, look, oh, at, look at Brody, <laughs> Ross Brody. The razzle-dazzle behind the back. But Geeman gets the turnover, and he gets the turnover because no one else realized that the ball was going to go there, including the Toronto supporters. It's one of those really um, difficult things that you want to be able to do is if you're going to do something like that, you need to have support right behind them to be able to clear out. And Geeman does a great job of getting that turnover. A great work from Gima and the former Free Jacks and Austin man take another look. So Jones comes through, but you can see there's just not enough support right there. And just, a, a, you know, I think Cortez was a little slow. He should be working a little bit harder when that, when he sees that ball come through. I mean, so far, Nola just looked a little sharper than Toronto. Toronto's ball is a little slow. Nola's able to play just a little bit quicker. And I think the line out has been is going to be an advantage for Nola. Line out coming from O'Toole. The Irishman came up through that contact academy. Coach Osborne singing his praises, one of the unsung heroes of this side. Cortez almost pinged for being offside there. Defending once. As you said, Pete, seems that there's a spring in the step of Nola. Can they find the opener? And just as I say that, lost forward. Yep, I mean, I think O'Toole is um, a, a real asset um, around the pitch, and he's their best thrower, which is why he started. Um, he was lost during warm-ups, along with Geeman last week, part of this injury bug that Nate Osborne's team has. And really, really good play. You could see him and Hol um, Holden Younger being able to play a little two-man game off the back of the mall, but wasn't able to hold on to the ball in contact. And, and if, I'm, if I'm Toronto right here, Kit, I think Cortez and, and, and Brower have a little bit Inside. of an advantage here in the scrum. Inside. And I might see if I, if I can some, put some pressure on this Nola scrum right. and see if I can get a penalty because they've had the nudge on, I think, on every scrum Bye. so far. Rob Brower, the 38-year-old from Lindsay, Ontario. He's been an arrow from the beginning. Getting his first start of the season. Nicely done there in the scrum from Toronto. Nice clear out, good work from Rumble. Who else? Toronto, they've shown their defensive right, right, prowess. Right. Wingers put you on, wingers on. Still scoreless in the 17th minute. The conditions certainly playing a factor, but it appears that the rain has let up, at least for the time right, being. Fingers right, crossed six. it'll be for a bit longer. Right. And a beautiful yep. bounce well inside the 22 and picked up by Younger just outside his own try line. You know, I'm not sure that I want my scrum half to get the ball there, run all the way into the teeth of defense and make that kick. He had Geeman right there calling for the ball. Give it to the 10. The 10's a better kicker. Um, you know, Toronto no definitely no won that kicking battle. They now have a platform. But they also have it on the line out, which has been the set piece that they've struggled in. Make sure you download the MLR app. If you haven't already, you're missing out. All the information, all the highlights, the latest news. And with just five weeks remaining in the regular season and in playoff times, we'll keep you up to date on everything happening in Major League Rugby. Nola getting the big men involved. That is certainly a strength of theirs. Their forwards carrying a little chip over. A great chase. What a take. Oh, I say that a bit too soon. And here come the arrows. 
Like he had it momentarily, couldn't secure it. Well done, nine, well done. Now back the other way from Brody. And wait, wait for your 15. Guillemot. And that is why you want to get it to Timothy Guillemot. He <laughs> has an outstanding boot. When he was with Austin a few years back, he was one of the tops in the league, 84 points, and most of those are coming off the tee. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a great kicker. He's one of these guys that is getting the opportunity with Nola. He's been on the bench. He's been a bit of a journeyman around MLR, but he really got this opportunity with Nola because of the injuries, and he's done, he's done pretty well. I mean, I think he's, you, know, you talk to Nate Osborne, and you'll hear that he's kind of grown into that position to really take the leadership role that you need your fly half to have. Well, good news. Second clean take on the line out from the arrows. It appears that they're cleaning up some earlier issues. Uh, they needed a lot of movement to get out of Cam Dolan there. They were able to do it. And again, another mishandle, but they were able to get away with it. It's okay. It's okay. Back with Dominguez. Julian Dominguez. The Buenos Aires State of Veracruz Pucará. Look at Dominguez go. Dominguez still on his feet. Dominguez across and down. Well, he, certainly a great run, but we're concerned a little bit about what happened at the end. He certainly looks like he's in a bit of distress with his shoulder. Dominguez grabbing at the left shoulder is the Porteño. As good as he has been, this would be massive. Well, I mean, break. Nola have a whole back take line that aren't able to play because of injuries. Well, we will take our first hydration break. And we will keep an eye on Julian Dominguez scoreless in Georgia between Toronto and NOLA. Honda is a proud partner of the Toronto Arrows. And Major League Rugby. Also brought to you by Puma, the official boot of the Arrows. Manola Gold on top. That man right there, Julian Dominguez, the Argentine, found it. He put a dot it down right before the first hydration break. And good to see him on his feet with a smile as he was grabbing at that left shoulder. It looked like he may have dislocated it. But a beautiful run from Dominguez out of that Club Pucará we mentioned. That's the club that also produced uh, Pantera Montero, the star for the leading try scorer for Toronto. But he's out injured today. So there will be no reunion of those two as Younger looking for the conversion to tack on the extra two. Yeah, you can see why Nola want to get the ball in Dominguez's hand with just a little bit of space. I mean, that was a good kick, but when he gets going, he's just very, very difficult to tackle. Younger at the line drive off the post, so it stays five to nothing. Take another look at the try from Dominguez. So just, I mean, it's just a kick. He takes it and he goes through and he beats three tackles, right? And that's, I mean, he is so strong in that lower body. It is so difficult for him to be able to hold onto the ball, but you can see his shoulder. I think it's his right shoulder that's really, or maybe his left shoulder that's really bugging him, but it looks like he can continue, which is good news. And the 24-year-old from Buenos Aires saying he's having none of it. He will stay out there. Will the former Jaguares man now in his second year with Nola, and he puts the gold ahead. Five to nothing, unsuccessful on the conversion was Younger. Now we will see the response from the arrows. Just poor communication there. Younger was going to do a box kick and. I think that was Cam Dolan that got in the way. It was coming up to provide a little bit of a shield for him. 
Being able to exit from the restarts kit is a consistently a problem for MLR teams, and it's really frustrating as coaches because such a change in momentum. Nola in the shadow of their own try line. Youngert wisely clears the lines and sends it out into touch. So just a real disappointing um, kick receipt by Nola. They, they field it, they set it up, and just a little bit of miscommunication there. Not sure what the problem was, but here we have a great opportunity for Toronto. But we've talked about their line out. The last couple have been a bit better. They've, you can see they're doing extra movement kit to stay away from Cam Dolan. Let's see if they can do that again. Quatrin will have to get a good throw in. Will the Canadian International does so after some miscues early in the set piece. It is a three for three now in the last three lineouts we've seen from the Arrows. They have the ball. They have possession, but no points. Trying to find something. Diana, Uruguayan International, just outside the five. Not rolling away. Nola pinged. We mentioned these two teams, particularly Nola. Well, it's really a contrast of penalties for Nola. They're one of the most penalized teams in the league. And you look at Toronto, and they're one of the cleanest teams in the league. Yeah, and we've got a uh, referee that keeps the ball in play that doesn't give out many yellow cards. And so, you know, um, that's why this half is going so quickly, Kit, is JP Doyle is keeping it moving. And, you know, right there it was interesting because JP Doyle said um, Guerrero was able to get over the ball. He was good, but Cam Dolan didn't roll away. So the first thing that has to happen in a tackle is the tackle has to roll away. If the tackle assist is able to come in and steal the ball, that's fine as long as the tackler rolls away first. So another chance for another line out. They went to the front right um, in the last line out, which is the easiest throw to complete, but it's not as good an attacking platform for the drive. So let's see if they go somewhere else on this one. You see the four line outs won by Toronto. Those have all come as of late early on. They missed their first two. Thank you. Another take here. Diana, the man who rises to take it. Inside the five meter, Toronto. Finally brought to ground. Good defense by Nota there. Brody still on his feet, looking to go to the blind side. Nola read it well. A wall of gold jerseys there. And again, please, number four. We've seen the good defending from Nola thus far. And Toronto breakthrough. for a little pick and drive, nothing doing. Just a little slow here, you want it to be careful, but I just feel like they're a little slow, now they're speeding it up. Inside, Mires, held up by Duplessis. Brody, electing to go to Rumble. Aggressive defensive line speed from Nola. Drop go. It was indeed and pushed well wide the attempt from Will Kelly. Look, yeah, so 22 drop out. I mean, interesting call by, I saw Kelly drop into the pocket, but probably not as far back as you would really want him to go. I felt maybe a little bit premature there. They had the ball, they, they were going for maybe it was all a little bit too slow, but this now gives Nola a chance to breathe, do a long kick, get a good kick chase, and move away from their try line. So a little bit of impatience there by the young Will Kelly, but this is the kind of experience he needs if he's going to be the Canadian fly off of the future, which is, I think, what Chris Silverthorne really thinks he's going to be. And former AAA hockey man for the Brantford 99ers and Hamilton Bulldogs. You said he dropped back, but you couldn't tell initially because it wasn't far enough into the pocket. He took it and pushed it wide. He's definitely been watching Joe Peterson from San Diego. <laughs> He's had a few of those the last couple of games. I think there are a lot of halfbacks watching Joe Peterson, and rightfully so. And interesting there, stays five to nothing. Nola in the 26th minute. Very defensive-minded, a territory game here in the first half, as you might imagine, the weather playing an impact. 
So that breakdown for Toronto was just too slow. Everything's just too slow at the breakdown. That's allowing Nola to either contest or build the wall, and it's preventing Toronto from really getting into their into their attack at pace. And I wonder if there's a little bit about, you know, having Kelly instead of Taylor Adams out there at 10, not quite having the confidence or the voice to really control the pace of the game. It's just a little bit too slow. Taylor Adams not in the match day 23. He leads not just the arrows, but the league in points scored this season does Adams. But you mentioned Kelly maybe trying to prepare the Anacaster Ontario man for the Maple Leaf coming on his shirt in a few short weeks in those test matches. And of course, the, the news of Sam Malcolm coming back, um, they're 10 from the first um, couple of years of existence of the franchise. I think everyone's very excited about that. Probably a little bit too late, but it'll certainly provide some great experience and, and allow Toronto to play through the international break um, without Kelly. And some big reinforcements have come on. Malcolm, one of those coming over after the season in Japan. Toronto trying to find something, a little kick through. Right back to Dirksen, read it well, charged down. Here the arrows with an opportunity. Lesage across and down. The co-captain ties things at five. Well, you weren't quite sure how Toronto were gonna get any points the way their attack was going. And Hanno Dirksen has played so well. But Ben Lesage is really critical to the success of Toronto as, you know, as you say, one of the co-captains, but he's just, he is such a dynamic player, important for line breaks. And you can see him reading what was going on with the kick through. Hanno Dirksen took the ball. He wanted it to go into the 22 so he could clear it, but just took a little bit too long. Lesage, the 25 year old from Calgary former UBC Thunderbird, a beautiful job reading that kick, charged it down perfectly, and was able to get on top of it. The conversion raises the flags and the arrows take the lead for the first time. And, and points are gonna be really, really important. You can see Lesage, the interesting thing is that when you go to a kicker, you need to know what their primary kicking foot is, and that's Dirksen's right foot, and you can see Lesage covering the right foot with that block, he puts his hand back, hand up, both hands up, that was absolute textbook. Dirksen's gonna be saying, hey guys, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll make it up to you. I'll make it up to you. Dirksen's gonna be really, really important, just like to Colette at fullback. In a wet game, kicking becomes really important, they, therefore your fullback becomes really critical. A rare miscue from Dirksen, particularly coming off that impressive performance last week, that game against Old Glory. But now Toronto on the front foot, and feeling confident are the men in the blue and white hoops. Nice take from Tukulet, the Argentine. Had very few opportunities with ball in hand. But great kick chase that has pushed them back. So they can't kick it to touch, so it'll allow Nola to get the ball and be able to run it back. So that should be straight out because Tukulet got the ball and was pushed back. Let's see if JP Dor says anything about this. Oh, he said it was tapped. If you could see, um, JP Dor says, says that that was tapped and therefore it's actually um, Toronto's ball coming in because it was tapped by another player. And this is in the attack from both teams correlating with the... Well, let's see a little, little bit of discussion there. <laughs> you can see the pain. Ross I Brody. Think Brody was not agreeing with JP Dor at all. That's the most polite disagreement you were going to get. And that's one reason we love rugby so much. Brody um, clearly disagreeing with the sir, but just the, uh, the smile is all you're going to get from the South African. Nola's turn to miscue. Really, really bad miscue there because there wasn't much of a contest. And now um, Toronto able to clear their lines, put some pressure on Dirksen again. And back to Dirksen, couldn't field it cleanly. Great chase, and we've seen that a few times from Toronto, and that time it was Manuel Diana. People we'll see, a little stab kick through, and we'll find itself into touch. Yeah, and I think, you know, Nola will be okay with that, just to be able to reset, but we've seen 
both tries so far have really come from broken play, right? So one was um, Dominguez on the kick, just be able to do it on his own. The other was the block of Hanno Dirksen by Ben Lesage. So right now, neither team able to generate much through their phase play attack. And I think that's just because it's wet. And when the ball's wet, it's hard to hold on to it. It's harder to play the more dynamic game. I think Noda have done that a little better, but both defenses have been set up really well. Batted back, Harrow is able to keep it. Weather certainly playing a factor, particularly early on as the rain has abated. We're starting to see a pickup in the attack. Both sides, I mean, a bit more of a go, if you will. Very little inside ball. Unable to get away from Waldron. Mires. See Toronto. We've seen this a lot in the territory. Certainly possession dominated by the arrows thus far. Just looking for that break. Just need, Brody's just a little slow. The ball's available, it's just a little slow. And that's allowing Nola to reset their defensive line. Just not enough space. And that's why it's probably gonna take a little bit of brilliance from someone, some individual work from Toronto to be able to turn this possession into a try. Knocked it forward, did Viana, the number eight coming on, couldn't hold on. Uruguayan International with a rare miscue. And you could see Ross Depeschmitt picked that up and he just had open field in front of him. And you can see JP Doyle say, I'm sorry, I called this. You can see Depeschmitt, the ball's out, comes out there, a little bit of knock on, comes out and just called. You can see JP Doyle, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just called it heads up. <laughs> Depperschmidt, the Texan, he thought he was off to the races. He was about to get on his horse and head to the try line. Yeah, I mean, it was going to be him and 80 yards of grass, I think, right in front of him. It was going to be just a pure foot race. And, you know, but that's how it is, right? So JP Doyle didn't think that was going to be advantage from that knock on. A cagey affair here in the first half. Nola struck first. Would have find the try courtesy of Dominguez. Leon Dominguez found it in the 19th. The, the un uh, underutilized bounce pass by Giemann, which really put Dirksen in some problems. I'm pretty sure that's not something they practice. I, I'm pretty certain it's not something, but it, again, it's, the, it's the, 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 uh, the wet that's making it difficult. The case there is Brode lost it. Dirksen did again, but ruled to have gone backwards. Nola content to keep ball in hand deep in their own territory. As I say that, Giemann, he will clear the lines. Interesting that under these conditions, Nola are still trying to move the ball wide. They're inside their 22. They're playing a real risk. I think this is where, like, the loss of someone like Carl Meyer, who has a really big foot and can really gain you, they're saying, you know, we're going to keep it in. And especially with Dirksen and Giemann both being right-footed kickers, it means when the ball goes to the left, they don't have anyone that can naturally clear that way where Toronto have took a left that has a left foot and Kelly that has a right foot. So they're, they're able to clear their lines from both sides. Pete, early we mentioned injuries and obviously 14 weeks in, there is no team that's 100% healthy, but I don't know that any side in Major League Rugby has dealt with the injuries that NOLA has. Well, especially in the backs. I mean, I think San Diego have had some challenges, but most of their challenges have been in the forwards. In the backs, they've, you know, they have a pretty much a starting back line um, that, are in, that, that are injured and unable going all the way through the offseason where they lost two starters. And at one point, Nola Gold using their sixth string halfback. That was just, you had to do it. Nate Osborne, I spoke with him earlier this week. He said, I was afraid I was going to have to dust <laughs> off the boots. Well, Nate was a pretty good player. I mean, uh, you know, you know, I don't know how long he could last, but I think he'd probably do a job, good job for like 10 minutes. He told me that he was going to get a red card in the first minute, and that was going to be his saving, his face-saving maneuver. I don't know that that would work the way he anticipated. And again, the knock on, the slippery pill affecting things. The Rugby Network, if you do not know about it, I don't know where you've been. It is all things you've got to love. Free, live, on demand, all the action, all the matches archived for you. The RugbyNetwork.com. It has been an absolute boon to Major League Rugby being able to watch all these matches. Not, not, so, not so good for my marriage because on weekends <laughs> I'm walking around with my iPad watching, watching game after game after game. So, um, but it is, I mean, I just, it's, it, it, it can be a little bit, it can be a little bit overwhelming. 
You just need to take that to the laundry room with you and say you're <laughs> helping out yeah, doing there's, things, there's you're doing a, some laundry. A cool kit. Yeah, I, sh I should do that. I mean, I should actually probably do the laundry, not just say I do the laundry. That's up to you. Okay. <laughs> so, so you know, very scrappy game here. Lots of knock-ons, but I think we saw in the last scrum, I think that you can see that um, Cortez and Brow are really have the edge over Waldron and Sullivan. And I think we're going to see that a little bit more as this half goes on, the scrum advantage for Toronto. Rob Brower just brings so much to this side, his first start as we, we mentioned the game earlier and what an impact that had. You saw the victory over Rugby United. And that's a huge boon for Nola Gold. And then another match tonight. It'll actually be right here at the Snake Pit. Second game in our doubleheader as Rugby ATL top the standings in the Eastern Conference. They will take on the Houston Sabercats. So I think that I, I think I'm right in saying, Kit, that that is the third one-point win in a row that Utah have had scoring on the last play or close to the last play. I mean, that's coming back with a comeback, which is absolutely nuts. They are certainly the side that their fans may need some cardiac attention is their fans. If you're a Utah fan, you're not leaving before that no, final you whistle. You are not leaving. And I, and I think it's all about the bench, right? So we'll, and we'll see it here. Both teams, I mean, I think Toronto probably, because they're resting some of their players, would say that they've got you know, they've got some people like um, Lavis and Shepard that are, and Ferguson that are really experienced, but they've got some young guys coming through. And I think that, you know, Nola might say, hey, we've got Eric Howard, Matt Harmon, Devin Shaw, Dam Damien Stevens. We've got guys that have been starters for us. I think the bench for Nola is going to be, has more experience. I think the Toronto bench is going to be a little fresher. So it's going to be interesting to see as we get to that second half. But I think Utah's bench has certainly won them um, three games in a row. They have indeed impressive stuff from the Warriors looking to finish in the top two in the Western Conference. And our scrum will reset. Doyle with a chat with Mr. Waldron. Do you know one of the eight call-ups for Nola Gold? Recently added, I think, I think this week. And so, um, you know, it's one of those things for, for, for Nola. They, they're very proud of their Canadians and, um, and, and U.S. players that are being called up. And I'm sure they're very excited for them, but you know, then they then they wonder, okay, what are we going to do with our scrums? So, um, you know, this is a great battle here with with Brower and um, Waldron, two internationals going at it. And I mentioned it before, Brower, his first start of the season, and what a difference it makes having him on the front row. Yeah, I mean, he's someone that would have played. He's a he's a teacher, um, and you know, he would have been playing every game if the games were up in Toronto. But a huge boost for them when they come down. Um, you know, when he comes down at the end of the season. Nola able to steal it at the breakdown. Again, the slippery ball. Teams having handling issues, and this time to the benefit of the men from the 504. Now's the time when, when Nola want to be moving it. There's actually space wide that Toronto are leaving, but they're going to go for the kick when they're outside their 22. I'm not sure the decision-making on these exits by Holden Younger is, is what Nate Osborne wants, although that is a great kick. Nice take from Mires. A good chase as well from... I believe that was Depper Schmidt. All the way back, Dirksen. Sends it out, but not the distance he was looking for there. No, no another, so, so a couple of really, really good kick chases here. And, and Toronto are doing a great job of just managing the game in the right place. They're kicking much better. They're kicking to space. Again, we've got a little bit of a miscommunication there with Dominguez, but look at that kick chase. Four Toronto Arrow players all coming down together. Dirksen had no choice but to be able to kick that ball. I think his instinct is to run. He think, you know, he loves doing stuff with the ball in hand, but the kick chase was so good. The chase as important, if not more so than the kick, and that's one thing that the Arrows have had from the opening kick today. They have done a fantastic job with the chase. Diana, right at Tongoia. Getting over the game line, that's what they need to do. Now they have to play quickly. Over the 22 go the arrows. Little time remaining in the first half. Can Toronto extend their lead going into the sheds? Flesh held up. Dolan there. Now to the blind side. 
Again, just too slow by Toronto. Look, look you see the defensive line, two players on, reset. Good ball here, able to find the offload. All Tukulet unable to pull it off the shoe tops. That was the opportunity, had that ball been a bit taller, a bit higher near the waist for Joaquin Tukulet. Right, but the defense of Nola is designed to put them under that pressure. You can see Dominguez come in. He's the last player, but he says, I'm going to make you do something really, really good. I'm going to make you get that ball away. So I think that's a really good read by Dominguez to be able to come in and shut off the attack. Johnny Sheridan there, the Bolton, Ontario man out of Humberview Secondary School. As there is a Nola player down on the pitch. You know, coming to the end of the half, it's, it, it's been very, very scrappy. A couple of, you know, the individual brilliance by Dominguez and then the work rate by Ben Lesage coming into two tries. Neither team has really been able to um, get into their attacking structures in a way that can create space. But Toronto have done a really good job of playing in the right spot. In, in the right spaces and always putting pressure on Nola inside their half. And that was Julian Dominguez, the try scorer for Nola Gold. We saw him earlier when he tried, when he scored the try, he put it down with his left arm. It looked like he may have, I don't know that he dislocated it, but he was able to continue. And Dominguez, he is absolutely integral to everything Nola Gold wants to do. You see there the tackle, Dominguez wrapping up Lesage. Yeah, you can see definitely not right. So when he's going to come into that tackle, that's that's really interesting. If you're Toronto, you would say, hey, let's let's try and isolate Dominguez one on one if he's got a shoulder or arm problem and make sure he holds on. But this is a huge scrum, I think, for um, for Nola because Toronto have had the edge. So I would expect to see Cam Dolan take this very quickly and just set up a platform so they can clear their lines again. The scrum thus far has been in favor of those men in the white and blue. And both of these teams are great scrums. In fact, Nola have come in at number one in um, ball retention at the scrum. They win their scrums really well, and that's a very, very solid scrum. Great attacking platform provided. Guillemot with the big boot. All came off the feet. That time, Sheridan didn't get a fingertip to it, so stays with Toronto. Trying to find a kick back behind. Guillemin, it goes backwards. And he will wisely send this one out into touch. Well, that was very, very smart play because when he went back into his 22, it had been a five meter scrum. And that will do it for the first half. It a, a cagey affair. Dominguez, the try score for Nola, being attended to. The weather certainly playing a factor. A defensive first 40. Toronto leads Nola seven to five. the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. Our schedules have changed and we'll keep updating them to serve you better. So be sure to visit GoTransit.com to see the latest schedules. Have a very safe trip. Go Transit. Safety never stops.
It is halftime. You know what that means. This is the Geico Halftime Report along with Mark Stabina. I'm Stacey Pates. 40 minutes in the books, 40 minutes to go, but more action on Sunday. Let's talk about that. L.A. San Diego, huge match on Fox Sports 2 and at 8 p.m. Seattle and Austin. So much to look forward to. Let's talk about San Diego, L.A. Stacey, things are heating up on the race to the playoffs, and these two teams are coming in hot. L.A. with a massive win last week. San Diego looking this is it for them. It's do yeah. or die for San Diego. And they are finally at home at Torero Stadium. And with some big scores recently, that's improved their try scoring average at the moment. Four per game. That is on the higher end. And they are closing in on the five per game of the Giltinis. So one thing's for sure, we're going to see a lot of entertaining rugby between these two teams. Both know how to tackle as well with... Well, look at San Diego. They are making more per game at the moment. And also, their turnover tackles is higher than the Giltinis at the moment. Plenty of feeling between these two in an all-California clash. And now we're looking ahead to Seattle versus AG Rugby. More on the line for AG. They are desperately trying to stay in touch with the top three and then eventually top two if they want to make the semifinals. And they both teams are on the lower end of try-scoring abilities. You know, really, AG Rugby is known more for their defence, and they certainly know how to defend. They're ranked number one at the moment with regards to the amount of points they concede, and Seattle know that. Now, Seattle also know how to score tries, so they'll, they'll want to step it up today and see if they can make some inroads on the AG Rugby defence. It's going to be an interesting clash and plenty on the line for AG Rugby. Let's see who takes the cake. And AG, they're going to finish their season on the road the rest of the way. So they have got their work cut out for them. Thank you so much, Mark. You're great as always. Thanks for watching this Geico Halftime Report. For Mark, I'm Stacy. Enjoy the rest of the game. With the updated Presto app, you can load funds onto your Presto card instantly. So no need for this or this or to wait here. Go from app to tap, just like that. Go Transit. Safety never stops. Sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. schedules have changed and we'll keep updating them to serve you better so be sure to visit gotransit.com to see the latest schedules have a very safe trip go transit safety never stops
Halftime in Atlanta. Toronto on top of NOLA 7-5 at the break. A defensive first 40 minutes in this one. The conditions certainly playing a factor in that one. Alongside Pete Steinberg, I'm Kit McConaughey. And Pete, well, as we knew, the rain. The good news was it let up about halfway through, but it was a big issue, particularly when it came to handling. Yeah, that's right. Neither team could really hold on to the ball. They couldn't get into their attacking patterns, and it was just mistakes and individual brilliance that provided the opportunities. It was indeed a big score from Dominguez, got things started from Nola, and then a charge down kick from Lesage. He was able to dot it down, a successful conversion, and that is the difference. Just a two-point advantage for Toronto at the break. Take a look at the standings here in the league. And well, we mentioned it earlier, New York, they lost a one point game to Utah and they are right there neck and neck with ATL. Well, I think it's gonna all come down to bonus points because the two, they lost, but they got two bonus points. Nola right now, they don't look like they're gonna score four tries. So even if they win, it's only gonna be four points. It keeps them in touch, but they really need to get those four tries. If they can get those five points, then they can be looking up at New York and saying, hey, we're breathing down your necks. All about getting into the top two, getting in playoff position. And that is what Nola's trying to do as we take a look at the West. Well, in the Western Conference, it's been about L.A. and who can catch the Giltinis. Right now, Utah's in that second spot. Yeah, and I think, again, for me, it's about the bonus points for Utah. Even when they lost, they were getting two bonus points. It's going to be a tough ride for Austin. But, you know, remember, they've got a game in hand, a win and a bonus point tomorrow against Seattle. And they're in, sort of in touch and point. Austin, they will be on the road for the remainder of their matches. As we take a look at some of these matches, and that was the one we mentioned earlier, Utah, the last second victory over Rugby United. And when the Warriors win, chances are it's at the last second. I, they are the cardiac kids of Major League Rugby. It, it is an exciting team to watch. And there we will have another one for you tonight, live from the Snake Pit, Rugby ATL. They will take on the Sabercats. They are looking to stay in top position in the Eastern Conference. So big matches there. And then two big ones tomorrow. We mentioned the Austin. They will be on the road. And then two of the top teams in the West in LA and San Diego. Well, that's a Southern California derby. I think San Diego, unfortunately, they've got healthy. They've got some reinforcements. They're playing good rugby, but maybe just a little bit late. But they'll be looking to take that Giltini scalp. They'll be looking to, to be the kings of Southern California. They will have the opportunity tomorrow, second half, coming up in just a bit at the break. It's Toronto on top of NOLA, 7-5. to five. Major League Rugby is brought to you by Honda. Honda, a proud partner of the Toronto Arrows. Take a look at our highlights from the first 40 minutes. It was Nola who got on the board first. Yeah, and this is just individual brilliance by Dominguez, a poor clearance kick 
by Toronto, and he just does what he does to beat people, but you can see, comes down, lands on his left shoulder, and that bugged him for the rest of the half. Did indeed, and then there was an opportunity, a rare drop goal, but unable to split the uprights was Will Kelly. I mean, at the time, I was wondering about it, but with this close game, that was a smart decision because these, the two tries have just come from errors. That was an error by Hanno Dirksen, not clearing his lines. Ben Lassage doing the work, making the block, and able to touch it down. So I think we're going to continue to see, Kit, that it's going to be around the mistakes, the turnovers, and errors that are important. Taking a look at the first half, uh, first half stats, what stands out to you, Pete? Well, I mean, you just look and say the territory is just phenomenal. Toronto managed where the game was played, and they also held on to the ball, but that tells you that the defense, 100 tackles already made by Nola Gold, and they only missed three. That is absolutely phenomenal defense, and Toronto, you, you, they have resorted to little kicks, trying to do attacking kicks behind. What Nola need is Nola need, need the ball in the Toronto half, and they need just to play with accuracy. They certainly need more possession and territories. Holden Younger gets ready to get us started here in half number two. Glad to have you with us again. A very warm welcome to you in round 14. After today, there are just four more regular season matches, and then it is on to the playoffs. Maybe, as we said, no side statistically out of the playoff picture just yet, but it is going to be very difficult for those men to get in. Nola, they still have an opportunity, currently fourth in the Eastern Conference, but they need a victory today, and not just a victory. You mentioned it at half. They need the bonus point wins. Yeah, and the bonus point wins means you have to score four tries. So even if Nola are up and, and, and you know they might be safe, they might still go for it because they need that extra point. Bonus points are always going to be important to decide who ends up in the top two. And it is going to be all on the road from here on out for Nate Osborne's side. They are at New England at LA, at Seattle, and they finish things up in round 18 at New York. Yeah, and that's why this win's important. And, I, and you know, that final game at New York could be a deciding game. It very well could be. Dolan there with the take. Lineouts have cleaned up as the rain has ceased. Fans happy that is the case, but Nola need to get that attack in gear. The defense was outstanding. 100 tackles made, only three missed, but very few opportunities for that man, J.P. Duplessis, and his counterparts on attack, unable to break through. And this is what you want to see more from Nola. And as we say that, they just lost it. Handling errors that we saw plaguing both sides in the first 40, continuing here into the second half. Yeah, I mean, that was actually a really great steal by Lucas Rumble, I think. He put his hands on, I was kind of surprised Looked like it might, might have been something that um, uh, JP Doyle was going to call, but Nola already starting immediately on the front, flip, front foot, playing with pace and finding holes in that Toronto defense. What you want to see from them, Waldron with the carry over the 22. Quicker to the breakdown is Younger, much better here from Nola. And Gearman's also playing flatter and really attacking the Toronto line. That's really helping them get over the game line. Dirksen unable to hold on, but says... Went backwards, does Mr. Doyle. Mentioned the power they had, and who else? He just looked like it was easy as you please. The open side flanker rumble. Nate Osborne mentioned it. He said, we have to get him under control at the breakdown. He's so good stealing it, and we've seen it all match long. Yeah, and Toronto have flipped the field again, so here we go. Nola find themselves all the way at the back. Despite they look a better attacking side, they're just not able to be accurate enough, and Rumble's really causing some issues. One of the top tacklers in the league and the best man at pinching the ball at the breakdown is the Canadian International. Trying to find a bit of space here. Nola up against the 16th defender and unable to stay in. You know, I think Nola will be okay with that because they found themselves in, inside the 22, but they are playing at some pace. They're getting over the game line. They continue to tack the outside shoulder of the Toronto defender that's allowing them to go forward and Giemann attacking the line. I think that's been an adjustment that Nate Osborne has had, and I think it's certainly shown. One of the interesting things about the Toronto lineout is a lot of movement has really confused the Nola defense. Nola just need to, Cam, Cam Dunn just needs, needs to make a decision about where they're going to go and get up, but the movement is preventing the defensive jumper from getting up. 31-year-old from Fort Myers, Florida. Oh, there it is. We mentioned Dolan. 
great line out steal has won. Now here comes Depper Schmidt. Nola on the front foot looking for the offload. Stays with the men in gold. And as you so correctly said, Pete, they have come out here on the front foot and energized Nola Gold side on attack. Guillemin, little cross field kick right to Dominguez. Dominguez, not wrapped up back on his feet is Julian Dominguez. Great defense right there. Dominguez in space, you would normally back him, but um, some great outside defense by Toronto. Dirksen, there's a tough first half for Hano Dirksen. The rumble there again. We will come back for the penalty. Yeah, they won the ball too quickly. They won it so quickly that they weren't able to play it. Holden Youngit wasn't able to get there in time, and so it ended up being a knock-on. So um, Dirksen takes it in. You can see a good clean-out, and then the ball's right there. Just a little bit of a delay there. I think the uh, interesting Holden Youngit turning to the referee and saying, hey, he's not coming through the gate. He's not coming through, and they're having that conversation right now. We'll call it the broadcaster's curse. Just as I say, the rain had let up for the final 20 minutes of the first half. It has started again here in the second. I wish you had that power kit, the power to be able to make it rain with your voice. I have very little power, and of that, I am all too aware. <laughs> so important scrum here for Toronto. It's their opportunity to get into their attacking flow, although I think we might see them playing, continue to play territory. Good push from Nola. Out it comes, Mires, Uruguayan International. Out it goes. We will come back. Yeah, big, big mistake. I think that was um, took a lot there with his left foot, being able to put it down there, put it straight out. So now here's Nola's chance, right? So they've, they've got a strong opportunity with the line out and be able to drive this in. Rugbynetwork.com, free, live, and on demand. What else do you want? That's it, right. What else do you want? It's as good as it gets. Lots of shows on there, so you can get MLR all access on there, not just the games, but there's a lot of uh, video podcasts on there. Get all the news. RugbyNetwork.com to Dolan, going through. Give him a nice little inside ball here. Depper Schmidt, and here comes Nola Gold. Younger. Doing a great job, quick to the breakdown, not allowing the arrows to come away with it. Almost lost it, did the gold. But much better, a sense of urgency from Nola here to start this second half. Tonguia. This is what you want to see if you're a Nola fan. Continuing to get to that outside gap, which allows them to play with some real pace. But lost another knock on. The handling errors continue to mount. And this is the real challenge that Nola have had all season. Traditionally, they've been a team that has scored very quickly. They they are dynamic in attack and they break them break teams down. But with all of the changes that they've had in the back line, they've had to become a little bit more patient and they have to hold on to that ball but they're definitely playing on that front foot i would like to see dominguez come in from that wing he's staying out on the wing too much kit with the power that he has bring him into the middle bring him through and see what he can do through the middle of that defense i would i would actually put him right at will kelly and ask will kelly to tackle uh, toronto have had some handling issues both sides have with the weather but Certainly a few here for the men in the white and blue. And the line out, that was a particular issue for them early on, but they've since cleaned it up. Well, they cleaned it up, but it looks like Nola made, have, have figured it out because that very last line out, they were able to steal it. But it's been a real problem for Toronto. I think partly it's because they're just playing a little bit too slowly. And when they play slowly, that allows the defense to set and come up and it allows you to put pressure on the attack. And so Toronto just have to play a little bit quicker I think Brody really has to make sure that he can move that ball from the base a little bit quicker. Quatrin popped up and we will reset the scrum. I think that it was interesting because in the first half kit, it was really the Toronto scrum. I thought they had the up, upper hand, but in the very first scrum of this half, Nola got the shove on. And so right now, once that happens, you know, Toronto are being smart. They're like, all right, we're, we're not gonna let, let you win the hit. 
we're going to play around a little bit with the timing because that hit, that very first engagement is so important to get into the right body position. And so Toronto were like, uh-uh, we're not going to let you do that. I'll stand up when we'll reset. Now we saw Cortez being attended to by the training staff just prior to the scrum, the Cordova Argentina name and former Pumas man. And a few knocks in this one. So everyone has an opinion. You can see JP Doyle saying, hey guys, just listen, just listen. He's talking to this side. So he's talking to um, Sullivan and Cortez. That's the side it went down. The good referee comes to this side to make sure it stays up. It looks like the scrum goes down by accident, Kit, but actually what normally happens is one of the props has lost in that engagement and takes it down because they're in a poor position, and if they don't go down, they're going backwards. They would never do that on purpose. Uh, they, I mean, it's really bad on the turf, <laughs> I'll tell you that. They definitely do it on purpose. And on turf, when your face hits that ground, that's not nice. Yeah, we've seen a few faces full of those rubber pellets here on the field turf at Lupo Family Field at Life University. Dirksen inside his own half. Now to the aforementioned Dominguez, see if he can get more involved. He has certainly been the most dangerous Ranola ball in hand. And that's what I want to see him do. I want to see him come in and look for the ball. Don't just stay out on the wing. But well defended that time by Toronto. Wicker to the breakdown. Pagawea there running the support line. Lesage had it, couldn't hold it. Knocked on by the men in gold. And you can see JP Duplessis being really mad at himself because he tried to force the ball to Tonguea in the contact. Just have patience. Stop trying to turn everything into a break. They play so well and they're playing so fast that you just do not need to be able to force those offloads. And you can see, I think, I think that was one of those little black balls in, in the eyes there, Kit. You were saying that we've seen him on the face. And I think Lucas Rumble had that. And the one thing I would say about Lucas Rumble, Kit, is that he has over 900 minutes in Major League Rugby this year. That is more than anyone else on this pitch. And I think that you saw last week, I think in the game last week, he was really, really struggling in terms of um, being able to play against Austin. And I'm not sure that he's going to last the whole game, which they normally do. And I think that Chris Silverthorne might be looking to help prep Lucas Rumble for the season. I think if Thomas De La Vega wasn't injured, Rumble might be on the bench. Manola electing to make the first change as they will bring Matthew Harmon, the 26-year-old prop out of Illinois, a former Life University man. He's playing on his college field. He will take over at the loose head in place of Kevin Sullivan. And immediately forces to come back and win, wins the penalty. That is, that is an inspired substitution. And one thing they say about Harmon, he is an old school prop. He is bruising. He likes to talk and you see it right there. Number 17 comes on and makes an instant impact. Yeah. And, and it's like that the set piece in these close games are so important and interesting that I think, again, if they had Cole Meyer on the pitch, they might be going for the points here, but they're going to put it in. They trust their line out. They score more than 50% of their tries, not just from line outs kit, but from the mall in the line out. They are so good at this. It's going to be a real challenge for Toronto to be able to hold it out. What a change from that man, the former running eagle on his collegiate pitch, the All-American now here as a pro and immediately a scrum one by Nola. Now the line out. Nice take to Dotti, or was it? I think I think the referee wasn't ready, or there was something going on. He said, "Uh, -uh. let's let's do that one again." It was very beautiful, beautiful take, great movement to create the space. You could see that Nola actually jumped in between the two defensive jumpers. Toronto putting up two defensive pods. So Pete, if you're Nola, are you the same play here. You. I think so. If, if it's the same defense, and that's, that's exactly what they do, and they've got a chance to set up them all. They do indeed. Here comes Nola. Men in gold, younger there. Defender came right through the middle. So that's a move, but it's available. It is indeed across Dolan and down, waiting for the signal. And the try from Cam Dolan, USA Eagle number 443, puts Nola on top. Well, we talked about how many tries they score directly from the mall, and that's exactly what they did here. They set it up really well. It was actually defended very well by Toronto. The ball was dropped. It's bouncing around, and Cam Dolan was able to pick it up and take it in. Often, Kip, when the ball is dropped, 
defensive stop. They all the defenders stop because the ball's dropped and Cam Dolan stayed alive, uses experience. He'll enjoy that one. Dolan on his collegiate pitch, another former Life University running eagle. He was an All-American and national champ right here back in 2013. He's got some good memories and he just made another one. Nola back on top. And they are looking to tack on another two. Big kick here because it takes it converted, takes it to a try and beyond a penalty. Youngert raises the flags. He missed his first. No trouble here. All smiles from Dolan and Nola. So the ball just dropped down. He picked it up. And like I said, I think all of the Toronto players were waiting for a whistle for the ball to be dropped. They're all looking back at the referee, but Cam Dolan played to the whistle, which is what you're taught when you step first start playing. The former San Diego man, he's formerly with Northampton Saints and Cardiff Blues there in Pro 14 back in the States. And you're exactly right. You play until the whistle. Dolan didn't make that mistake. The defense for the arrows may well have, and Dolan takes full advantage. I mean, he's such a good player. He's such an experienced, more than 50 caps for the U.S., one of the most experienced players on the NOLA gold team. And when he's not in this team, the team just isn't the same. They've, they've you know, you've seen it this year. When he hasn't played, they haven't been the same. He's, he's a great, what we call, edge back row forward, um, able to play out wide with the ball in his hands. Well... Those of you like myself, Father's Day is tomorrow. You may not have done your shopping. I recommend shopmlr.com. Get it done. Get it done quickly. Get your father something he will actually like for Father's Day. Well, they turn it over again, and who's that guy? Cam Dolan. Dolan, so great in the line out. And this one charged. Got a piece of it. Now flesh with it. Big man from Coburg looking to rumble. And in and out of the hands of Lesage. The handling errors continue as the rain has come back in the second half. So I think we don't always realize it, but Thomas De La Vega is such a mess for Toronto when he's injured. And he's amazing around the field. I mean, I think um, uh, De La Vega, Diana, and Rumble are probably the best balanced back row in the league. But De La Vega is their number one line-out jumper. And I'm wondering that without him, that's one of the reasons why they're really, really struggling. So, because that was really just a miss, throw, and jump. It looks like Nola electing to make a few more changes. You see Moni Tungaiwea coming off. It'll be Devin Short coming on. Short, the Las Vegas native who turns 23 tomorrow. Happy Early birthday to Devin Short comes on, a very talented sevens player with the USA Falcons. Gimmon out to Dirksen. Dirksen, well read. Nicely taken, a little kick over the top. Dirksen right there. Damian Stevens on for Nola, and he just allows them to play a little bit quicker. Not quite as physical as Holden Younger, but a great foot, and you'll see his box kicks will be a real asset in this weather. And Nola making numerous changes as they've had to deal with injuries all year long. They worked on the versatility of players. It's one thing Coach Osborne has been very proud of. He says, we put guys in positions they may never have played. We just told them to go out there and play rugby. And a change as well for Toronto as Leandro Levas, the Uruguayan, will come on for Johnny Sheridan. And that was Gaston Mieres dropping that kick. Just like I said, the kicks from Damian Stevens, they come down with a little bit of snow on them. They're so high. And you could hear Gaston, um, or you could, I think Mieres was feeling the pressure from Depeschmitt coming up there and had to let him go. And... It'll be another Gaston this time. Cortes who comes off. So changes plentiful for both sides. And this is where we're going to see some, some less experienced players coming on for Toronto. They're really looking for not just um, next season, but actually next month, right? Because they're, they're going to have a couple of games where, they, where, where they're missing so many that we'll see some of these young players and it will be a chance for them to get experience. That should give an advantage to Nola, but as I said, these guys will be fresh and they'll be enthusiastic to show that they can do something. 
The Corte is giving away to the 26-year-old from Quebec, Marc-Antoine Ole. We mentioned a lot of these players, 12 of them, in fact, for Toronto, getting call-ups, and you've seen that. They brought in a lot of fresh faces and reinforcements. Alex Janlin, the front row. Ronan Foley, the number eight and sometimes flanker there as well. well. Nolo just really don't have any shape right now, and they're really struggling to be able to build it. So they need to build some shape so they can get back into their attacking patterns. Stevens, the Namibian international, serving now as a scrum half and having some issues there with communication and another knock on. Good defensive series by Toronto. They were able to slow the ball down. They were able to get in, build their wall. And then that was a really, really good launch. They've done a good job of pressuring in contact the Nola attack, and that's why Nola have turned it over. You can see some of the frustration in the Nola players every time they drop the ball. They're saying, if we can just hold on to the ball for five or six phases, we'll have a chance to win. But I don't know how many times they've done that, Kit. Easier said than done under these conditions. And it's not just the weather, it's the defense by Toronto as well. Give credit where credit is due. Yeah, they absolutely. Made some massive tackles. It's a much younger front row by Toronto. We'll see how they hold up. And that tackle number, it was at 100 at halftime for Nola. It may be a bit higher than that, but it has gone up considerably for Toronto here through the first 18 minutes of the second half. Yep, yep. Nola have had the ball, and Toronto have been able to hold them out, except, again, we had a drop ball where everyone stopped. It's been these unusual situations that have scored the tries. But interesting call there by JP Doyle. He said you weren't pushing square. So even though Nola had the drive on in the scrum that you have to stay square and jp doyle said uh, i don't think that was so square so you'll see that they come in they get the drive on and i think that that is that's um harman and right in front of the referee says hey you're turning in you're, you're going square it can be quite hard to stay square when that wheel happens, but that's what the referees ask. Two of the three starters from the front row having been replaced is Howard now taking over for O'Toole at Hooker and Harmon there for Sullivan. Does that make any difference? Well, I mean, Howard's a very, very experienced Canadian international, but he's not as good a thrower as O'Toole. So I think the line out, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. He's had some struggles this year. Mike Shepard, the 32-year-old from Brampton, Coming on, one of the original arrows, Shep taking over in the second row for Paul Cellini. Changes continue for both sides. Big high cross field kick, he lost it. Dominguez wisely watches it out into touch. Levas, the intended target. I think it was a, it was a uh, advantage from pulling down the mall. So that was a really good Toronto drive it never stopped so you could see it was just edging forward and once it stops once JP Doyle will say hey that's one stop and you have to get it out because it stops a second time it's a turnover but Nola were just unable to do that so great you know again we've got some of the younger guys in the pack for Toronto but they're really providing some of this energy and Kelly playing with the advantage wisely took the kick and now we'll send this to touch for the line out Opportunity here for Toronto if they can get this line out to work. That'll be the challenge. And it's one of the things that you have when you have new players come in. Your timing's a little different. You have to get your mindset right for the calls. They have to make this very, very clean. The one thing I would say is that when we've got down here, Nola haven't been contesting in the air, and I don't like that. They've got a great opportunity to contest in the air, but if you contest in the air, it's harder to prevent the drive. So they've been staying down and said, hey, we're just going to stop the drive. Again, another uncontested line out. They will stay down and try to contest the drive. Able to bring down the mall. Brody inside. Some of the new additions there in the pack getting their first touches. Kelly. Right at Howard. Now to the blind side, a little space. Mires trying to find a way to sneak through. Just shy of the 22. Big Shep, nowhere to go. Dino Waldron with the tackle. 
great opportunity here for Toronto, trailing by five. Brody's just a little slow at the breakdown. He's taking his eyes off the ball. It's becoming very difficult for them to be able to generate any sort of pace. Oh, able to find his way through. Nicely done there. Quatrit with a rare carry. And the hooker making big meters. Again, slow getting the ball out is Brody. Nola, plenty of time to set up defensively. But I think we see a little bit for the Nola players, just a, a challenge with these new players being as good defenders. They went, um, Quattrum went right through the defensive wall, just a missed tackle. Just outside the five meter mark. Kelly, a little stab cake through. Mirez giving the chase. He's got it. Try time Toronto. Will Kelly to Gaston Mirez. Well, that's what we said. We talked about at halftime, Kit, that against this defense, maybe their best way of being able to break it is the kick through. And it was a beautiful kick by Kelly. A great chase. No real chance for any NOLA players to be able to get across. So tough when you're near that line to have that fullback rotate because they're generally up in the line. Um, very, very smart play. He had his 73 caps with Los Teros, the Uruguayan national team, the man from Punta del Este. Not a bad place to call home, if I do say so myself. And a beautifully weighted ball, a perfect kick from Kelly. It is there on the spot. Well, Mieres is the guy that really opened up the South, um, the South American contingent. He went to Toronto, he loved it, he told all the people that he knew, and that's why we have such a large South American contingent from Uruguay and from Argentina in particular. Huge kick here, huge kick to take the win, um, or sorry, to, to take the lead for Spencer Jones. And Jones put Toronto up. Jones unable to split the uprights. We are knotted at 12 apiece and we will take our final hydration break. 12 all between Toronto and NOLA. Stick with us. the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. Round 14, and what a match we have here in Marietta Life University, Lupo Family Field. It has been a back and forth affair, and we are knotted at 12 apiece alongside Pete Steinberg. I'm Kit McConaughey. Pete, you couldn't ask for much more. Well, we could ask for them to hold, on, to hold on to the ball, but as a competitive game, yes, this is a hugely competitive game. Very, very important. Tie is not enough for Nola especially without the bonus point. They really, really need to get the win. And it's going to be all about the bench, all about what the bench can do to clear, to, to um, put away at the end in the last 15 minutes. Speaking of the bench, the Arrows bringing on Andrew Ferguson, the 29-year-old Arrow number nine from Mississauga. Out of Lauren Park Secondary School, he will take over as the scrum half. And another change as Kyle Rogers comes on, taking the place of Guillemin as a halfback. The handling has been an issue and you can attribute that to the weather. Also the tough tackling from both sides, but huge, huge call there from um, JP Doyle for losing your feet on the attack. You don't often see that. He called it once before, Noli now called it on Toronto. 
Um, you can't lose your feet if you're if, and, until after you've had a contest. So you people, you'll see people get, lose their feet over the ruck, but it's generally because they've pushed someone out the way. And then here's a great opportunity. We said Nola score their tries really well. So great chase. Dirksen comes in. Tukalek comes down, and you can just see right there a seal where Hanno Dirksen is, is on his feet, wants to get the ball, and it's sealed off. He um, celebrated a little bit too aggressively for J.P. Doyle there. Okay, nice work there from Dirksen. And a clean take in the hands of Ignacio Dotti. Just shy of the try line. Nola looking to respond after conceding the five, the try from Mirez on the little kick through from Will Kelly. They are shy of the try line, at least for the time being. The big men looking to rumble for Nola. Hardest thing here is to stay onside. You've got to be behind the line. Double movement. Double movement by Guerrero there. He comes in, he hits the ground, he tries to score. He loses the ball, he grabs it again. Just not enough patience. You'll see he comes in, he comes down. There's one movement and there's the second movement. Great camera work by our crew in Atlanta be able to show that. And just have the patience down there. You're going to get some points. This allows Toronto to clear their lines. Massive mistake from the open side flanker, the 22-year-old out of Mount Carmel High School in Chicago. And they were mere inches away. And now all the way back to the 10-meter. Nice run here from Dirksen. All to play for. Oh, losing a little bit of their discipline here. Toronto Ping did the breakdown. I mean, it's been a pretty clean game in the first half, but as we've come, some of the substitutes that have come in, you have to listen to J.P. Doyle. He said, release, release, didn't release. So good referees talk you out of penalties, Kit, and J.P. Doyle is amazing at talking people out of penalties. You he, just listen to him, and you won't get penalized. He's the best in the league at that, in fact. He's the official in Major League Rugby who goes to the card the least, and that is because he's able to do just that. Well, interesting here, we've got a conversation between J.P. Doyle and Devin Short, and what happened is that Nola kicked it all the way through the try zone, so it's going to come back and it's a scrum to Toronto. So a mistake by Toronto, a mistake by Nola. Is there anyone that wants to win the game kit? You don't think anyone Short here? was just inviting him to his birthday party? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, Devin Short's a great American story. Great American story as a player that, that picked up the game, could play rugby in college, and uh, I'm sorry, football in college, but played rugby instead. If you're not watching Tuesdays, 5.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS2, you are missing out. Mark and Stacy, a wonderful job on MLR All Access, the official show of Major League Rugby. Make sure you catch it every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern time on Fox Sports 2. Now, you mentioned Devin Short, and American football player, came out of Las Vegas, Arborview High School. He was an outstanding high school and collegiate football player as well. And we've wondered for so long about that transition for American football players to the rugby pitch. Short is, he's a great success story in that respect. Yeah, he is. And, you know, we, we look at the athletes, you know, we saw, you know, um, you see players like players like Domikina, right? Another football player that's coming over. They bring a level of athleticism. It's hard to get some of the nuances, but Devin Short made this commitment early to rugby in his career and has really done a great job in being able to do some of that dirty work around the breakdown that Lucas Rumble is so good at. It's okay. a great matchup right now. Coach Osborne praising him, wanting to learn as much as he possibly can, just being a sponge, soaking things up, even though he's been in the game as a pro for a few years, still realizes there's a lot to learn. High skyscraping kick. You see Depper Schmidt felt that he was unable to get to it because of one of the arrows. And J.P. Doyle's probably saying, hey, everyone was contesting for it. As long as they're contesting for the ball, it's okay. But a good attacking platform here for Nola. What I might do if I was Nola right here, we've got Carl Rogers at 10. What I might do is I might say, you know what? We haven't been able to hold on to the ball for four or five phases. Let's launch and look for some space behind. Let's look to get some kicks in and see if we can just play down in Nola's end so in Toronto's end, and use their discipline issue to our advantage. Nice take. Dolty there with it for Nola. 
just about 10 minutes remaining. Pete, you know Nate Osborne well. You've coached him. You've been friends with him for a long time. What is he saying to his side to come away with the victory? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's about playing in the right spaces and then just being patient, not trying to do too much. I think if I was them, I would be really looking to be able to use their foot and get into the Toronto half and then put pressure on Toronto and let Toronto play their way out without giving away the penalty. And on the other side, Chris Silverthorne, anything in particular he's saying or just continue doing what we've done thus far? No, I mean, I think for Toronto, it's about let's not be hasty on the penalties. They've had a couple of penalties at the breakdown. Let's listen to the referee because without those penalties, they're actually in this game and they've got a great opportunity. Mire is off the fingertips, but it went backwards. Able to fend off one, couldn't get away from short. All to play for in the final 10 minutes or so. Again, no, no side is statistically out of the playoff picture of yet, but that is going to change after round 14, and both these sides understand that if they have any chance of getting to the playoffs, they have to get a victory here today. And we're seeing some really conservative play right now with teams you know both teams with the ball about their 10 meters putting up high kicks contestable kicks but here we go with nola now in the toronto half let's see what they can do dolan and, and and they've got a penalty advantage from the high tackle they do indeed the high tackle there on dolan man ben lesage and jp duplessis have had a great battle um, great tackle there by lesage great launch they've had a great battle here to see those two centers go at it two two of the best centers in the league there are bodies strewn across the pitch, and for good reason, in a physical contest from the opening whistle. But it's going to be a penalty to Nola. They're going to kick to touch, and they're going to get their line out going, and they need to have patience. They need to make sure that they look after the ball, and if they can get the ball into Dominguez's hands, he's shown what he can do. He has indeed. Julian Dominguez, the man from Pucará in Buenos Aires, he got the scoring started early on. Well, it's not just with the score, but he's just a big physical player. That was the kick, being able to break tackles. He's just a real, real handful. And you can see getting him in the middle of the field and giving him some of those opportunities is what they want because when he gets that space, this is what he can do. He can break tackles and he is a finisher. All that being said, Toronto's done a much better job of corralling him here in the second half. I, I'm not sure if it's Toronto's done a better job or Nola just haven't done a good job of giving him the ball in space. And remember, his try came from a kick. It wasn't even Nola able to do that. These conditions make it very difficult. And I talked about Ben Lesage. Ben Lesage is an outside center, great defender. He's been coming up. He's been shutting that ball off before it can get to Dominguez. Billy Stewart coming off. Put in a good shift, did the 27-year-old from Rhode Island, the former Tulane Green Wave. Waldron as well. Nola emptying the bench for the final few minutes as all the reserves coming out. Yeah, and we've talked about the bench, and I have to say that some of the young players that have come on for um, Toronto have really stood up. I mean, I think you've got the uh, um, the two props, so Janlan and uh, uh, Ule. They've come on, and they've come on and really helped, helped themselves up. Adrian Wadden, the man who is being assisted as we see the high tackle on Dolan that drew the penalty. Yeah, anything that's above the shoulder, pretty easy call there by J.P. Doyle, but a great opportunity here for Nola to be able to take it. But they were down here before, right? And if you remember, Guerrero tried to do, like, just didn't have the patience. Just get in there, have the patience. It's so hard to defend from that far out without giving away a penalty. JP Doyle will tell you you've got it and then take the opportunity, but it's all about getting this line out right. William Waggis back to 23 year old from right there out of Jesuit High School in New Orleans. Coming on, he will take the place in the second row for Stewart. JP Doyle, I think was talking, I think Stevens came up a little bit late and he said, hey, if you're gonna come up late, we're gonna have to reset and let the other team match that number. So we completely reconfigured front row now with Harmon Nalt as the props. Howard, the hooker for Nola. Nice setup by Nola here. They've got that forward edge, balls at the back. Howard with it. Rumble there. Rumble, uh, cognizant of not committing the penalty. Yeah, he was looking at J.P. Doyle saying, can I get the ball, can I not get the ball? He was looking at him the whole time. He had hands on Howard, eyes on Doyle. 
And Dorso pulling it down, so another chance for the penalty. I mean, at some point, have they got to think about taking the points here? I mean, you know, it's, it's close. I think they'll kick to touch this time. I think anything just a little bit more in the middle. Well, the man you would assume to take those kicks, Timothy Guillemot. Or Holden Younger, but, De but Damien Stevens is a great kicker, and that's what they've decided. I could see there was, there was, a, dis there was a, um, a discussion, and JP Duplessis was said, let's take the points to Cam Dolan. Cam Dolan said to JP Dor, hey, we'll take those points. Um, Damien Stevens a great kicker, so a good choice. Probably the strongest kicker they have in this 23. It will indeed be the 25-year-old Namibian international spent last year in the Super Americana Liga de Rugby down in South America. Was with the Olympia Lions in Paraguay. Now in North America, can he put Nola on top? Can indeed. Steven splits the uprights and gives Nola the three-point advantage. Well, we talked about his kicking being a difference when he came on the field, but I was talking about his box kicking. But his kicking um, from the tee is also very strong, and that's a bit of a warning to Toronto, which is those penalties that they've been giving away inside their own half will now be punished. Oh, Stevens. Member of Namibia's 2015 and 2019 Rugby World Cup side. With a big kick there on the penalty. And now Nola with a five point lead and just, or excuse me, three point lead in just about five minutes remaining as Brower comes off. And they, one of the newest additions, Alexandre Johnlin, the Frenchman signed just this week, comes on for Toronto. To Coulette. Of time now becoming a factor for Toronto as well. Yeah, and great. I mean, this is a great kick. I think that was Kyle Rogers with that kick. I mean, I, I, when this ball was going back and forth, I'm like, this is exactly what Nola wants, right? They, they want this to go back and forth. Toronto need the ball in their hands. They want to play in the right in the right places, but they've only got five minutes left. And beautiful, beautiful kick. Great vision. Was able to out kick the kick receipt team that was back there for Toronto. And now Toronto, who we've talked about their line-out challenges. Great opportunity right now um, for Nola to be able to contest. So you can see Cam Dunn saying, how many are there? Toronto have gone short. They're not as good as short as they are with their full line -out. So great opportunity for Nola here. Beautiful kick from Rogers. First year with Nola after two in San Diego. California native puts the pressure on Toronto. Toronto did so well winning that. Cam Dolan read the jump, but they still won it. Milwaukee Kratz coming on. Man out of Victoria, BC. Canadian U20 now on for Nola as well as they have put all of their replacements on the pitch. Yeah, and Lachlan Kratz had a great impact when he came on early in the season, like a really, really exciting dynamic player, and of course, and a Canadian. So he's playing up against a lot of the guys that he knows probably looked up to and played with in the Canadian U20s. Howard taking his time before the throw. Nola very happy to take precious seconds off the clock. Yeah, they'll catch this and they'll drive it and they want to slow the game down and they want to keep it tight. There's no point moving it wide right now. Important line out here for Howard and Nola Gold into the hands of Dolty. Now there's space on this blind side if Dominguez saw it and came over here. Howard to the blind side, into the hands of Dominguez. Dominguez turns on the Jets. Does he have enough? Dominguez inside the 22, pulled down shy of the five meter line. Stevens there quickly and tried to get it intercepted. Beautiful job reading it by Spencer Jones. Uh, again, the lack of patience by Nola when they're down there. They had a chance, just hold on to the ball. You're gonna, you don't need to score a try. The team that needs to score a try is the team in blue. What a turn there, Nola. They were meters away, turned it over, and then the favor returned by Toronto. Well, Nola were much smarter than me because I saw that space on the blind side and I saw Dominguez go to the open side. And I said, there's space on the blind side, but it was all part of the play. Dominguez came back around and really, you know, I think he should have just put his foot down. You can see Carl Rogers right there, trying to, don't, you have to make that pass, trying to get it to JP Duplessis. Just go forward, set up the ruck, but they're in a good spot. They've got a scrum. You think they've got the edge in the scrum. i would probably give a little shove if they can. And they've got a minute and a half where they have to hold on to the ball. 
Nola understand that if they are going to find their way into the top two, they have to get a victory here today. A great push from the gold scrum. Duplessis going through the hands. Rogers, a big tackle turned over almost right again. That time, Levas in the right place at the right time, but just couldn't hold on. I mean, how many times did they have to try and make that extra pass when they shouldn't? Um, but, I mean, they had advantage from the scrum, which is exactly what they should do. They'll now be able to kick it directly in, but it looks like we have an injury. I believe that's Spencer Jones. It uh, is indeed. Which would be really, really disappointing. If, like, we hope it's not anything serious because this is an important player for the Canadian national team as they go to the UK. 23-year-old being attended to. And I think, you know, we, we talk about the upcoming tours. So Canada plays Wales and then England. The USA plays England on July 4th. Um, as speaking as someone who's from England. But someone with two passports. Someone with two passports. I would say that the English probably aren't as familiar with the... We don't talk about that very much back home. Interesting uh, that that's not a big part of English history as it is of American. That's right, that's right. And, and then they play Ireland. And one of the interesting things I think that the league has done that is really smart is they've moved the game, the Toronto, New York game, that was originally on the 27th. So there's an international window where the players have to be released. And you can see right there that ankle got caught on the turf. And the left um, ankle and, of yeah, Jones. And got, and got turned, so. Hopefully, hopefully nothing more than, than a mild sprain, although it does look does look pretty bad. So the, the league were um, smart and, and very understanding. So they moved the New York Toronto game that was on the 27th, which was the first day of the international release. So all the players would be gone for Toronto and for, um, and for and for New York. And they moved that game from the Sunday to the Saturday. So all those players can, can play. So. This doesn't look great for Spencer Jones. It looks like it's one of those ankle injuries with the turf that um, uh, could be very serious. Unfortunate to see Jones down. A key part of this Arrows side and the Canadian international side is the youngster born in Canada. Spent a bit of his childhood in New Zealand. Came up through that Waikato development squad, the Jones. So, Pete, we've got a second. I have to ask you, that match on the 4th of July. Oh, I'm pulling for the States. I would hope yeah, so, no, considering no, no doubt. former coach of the U.S. women's national yep, team. Yep, no doubt, no doubt. I'm, 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 I'm pulling for the U.S. I'm, you know, I think one of the great things that MLR has done for the international game is that it's allowed us to be able to um, uh, learn learn about the players so now there are so many mlr players on the canadian and the u.s teams that when they go play we actually know more about them and you can see the concern that that, that some of the toronto arrows have for their teammate and rightfully so I, I would add to that not just canada and the usa but some of the south american yeah, countries right. as well uruguay argentina well represented in major league rugby and starting to see more of those south americans coming up to play in mlr and really what it's been able to do for the growth and development of rugby throughout the Americas. Yeah, I mean, I think Major League Rugby has had a big impact. It's given everyone a real pathway to a professional contract, whether that's in South America or North America. And I think we'll see more players. Yeah, it looks like, looks like they're, they're, they're putting a splint on. Um, so this is one of those things where, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, obviously a serious ankle injury, but we hope it's not as, that this is all proportionate. Yeah, Jones, he was injured a year ago. Did not play in that truncated regular season. Obviously, just five matches last year because of the pandemic. But he's been a stalwart of this team back in 2019. He played 16 of the 17 games for the Arrows, and he is a huge part. Good to see him on his feet. And obviously, there is a splint, and he will be assisted off. And our thoughts certainly with that young man right there, Spencer Jones, we've said it, just 23 years of age. Yeah, I mean, it's great to get some of these guys. I mean, I, one of the things that the Arrows have done a really good job of is that they've partnered. They, they work very closely with um, uh, Rugby Canada. They work um, close, closely with Kingsley Jones, the um, Canadian national team coach. And you can see a lot of their 
uh, young players that have come up, have come from the Pacific Pro program, which is um, sort of a semi-professional developmental program. And um, you can see a couple of those Pacific Pride players made it to the Canadian squad, but they're also getting the experience here with the arrows. And some of those guys will come out and, and fill the spots for the first two weekends of July. What a job they have done, the Arrows, and what they've meant for Canadian rugby. Obviously, you have Pacific, Pacific Pride, that development side, but a lot of times you look at the Arrows and maybe just an Ontario side. That could not be further from the case. You have players from all provinces represented. That's right. That's right. It's, I, think, I think the Arrows want to be the place where a young Canadian player goes and plays. There's, there's you know, Canadians all over. Like, so there's Eric Howard, who's obviously playing. Kyle Bailey that, that, that plays for NOLA. But um, the Arrows want the young Canadians to look, look to them first. Damian Stevens, a chance to make it a six-point NOLA lead in the final few minutes here. Stevens made his last penalty. He makes this one right down Main Street. All smiles from Stevens. And it looks like that was the last kick of the game. It was indeed the final whistle. Stevens splits the uprights, and Nola Gold takes the victory, 18 to 12, the final. Well, when you talk to Nate Osborne this year, Nola have done nothing easily. Every game that they win is a grind. This is another great example of that. And so Nola win another game on the road in their, their four more games on the road. They have to still win all of them. But Toronto, um, I think they should be proud that some of their young players stood up in that second half. The final from Marietta, Georgia. Nola on top of Toronto, 18 to 12. With the updated Presto app, you can load funds onto your Presto card instantly. So no need for this or this or to wait here. Go from app to tap, just like that. Go Transit. Safety never stops. Our schedules have changed, and we'll keep updating them to serve you better. So be sure to visit GoTransit.com to see the latest schedules. Have a very safe trip. Go Transit. Safety never stops.
the final, a wet one in Marietta. Lupo Family Field on the campus of Life University, and it's Nola Gold on top, 18 to 12. Pete, impressive performance for both teams. Obviously, the weather played a factor, but Nola able to hold on, and they have now won two in a row, and they are still in the playoff picture. You're, you're very, very kind, Kit, when you say an impressive display. I think, I think it was, it was, it was sloppy. Obviously, the conditions made, made a big difference. Um, but I think the commitment of both teams was really strong. We saw, we did see a lot of very good defense and a, a lot of pressure, and Nola were really able to pull it out. You, I mean, Kit, do you remember the halftime? I mean, the halftime, it was all Toronto. Possession, territory, um, uh, um, tackles, and then the second half was all Nola. And I think that was their ability to be able to hold on to the ball, to be able to play the game in the right part of the field. And I just want to point out, six tackles missed by Nola. That is, is an impressive defensive performance. 132 made, almost 100 in the first half alone. They missed just six the entire match. Nola gets the victory. But things, they continue to be difficult. They are on the road for the remainder of the season. It'll be at New England next week. And for Toronto, they will take on Rugby United in round 15. For Pete Steinberg and our entire MLR crew, we thank you for joining us. The final today, Toronto falls to NOLA Gold, 18-12. NOLA with the victory.